Okay, uh, so today I'm going to introduce you to you know something something else in Python that are called variables. Variables are basically names given to memory locations. Uh, when I talk about memory locations, that means it's uh, I'm talking about the RAM. Inside the RAM, you to store certain data. So this place, wherever you are storing inside the RAM, this is given a name, and this particular name are called variables. When you write program, there may be situations where we need to store data temporarily inside the computer's RAM. In such situations, we are going to use variables. And today we are going to see how to use variables. Now first, what we do is, uh, I'll give you a simple example first, a equal to 5. Now do not mix this up like in mathematics, that is 5 is a or a is 5, nothing of that sort happens. You have to read it this way, assign the value 5 to a, because a is like almost like a container. a is like a container where the number 5 is getting stored, so it's a container or in other words we can tell that 5 is getting stored inside the memory, inside the RAM and it is referred by the name A. Similarly, when I write B equal to 6, what is happening? This particular value that is 6 gets stored in the memory and it is referred by the name B. When I write C equal to A plus B, now what is happening? A refers to the memory location which contains the number 5. And B can, refers to that particular memory, memory location which contains 6. So these two numbers get added and get stored inside C. Now if you write print C, obviously it's going to print 11. So this is how variables work. Now you see Python is such a language, whatever value you store inside a variable, that variable uh, is considered to be of that type. What do I mean by that? You see. Out here, I am storing numbers, that is 5 is a number and 6 is a number. More precisely, I am storing an integer inside A and an integer inside B. In Python, any number without a point is considered to be an integer. Remember, we have three categories of numbers which can be used in Python. That is first, integer, that is numbers without a point. Similarly, numbers with a point, that means a number with decimal point, is termed as float type numbers. Remember float means or floating point number means a number with decimal point. These are only names. And the third category is complex numbers. That is, uh, you know, it, it's in this particular form a plus ib where i is uh, root over minus one. I believe uh, you'll be studying or you had already studied complex number in mathematics. Uh, if you haven't studied, you will definitely study um, and then we can start uh, writing programs related to complex numbers. Currently, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going, only going to work with uh, variables that stores numbers in the sense that it's going to store numbers either integer or it's going to store a uh, floating point number. This is what we are going to deal with currently. However, there are more types like Boolean types, string types. I believe string is a, anything that is enclosed within quotes. Please remember that. Suppose a is equal to, you know, uh, a, b, c. So now a is considered to be a string type variable because it's so storing a text. So any group of characters enclosed within quotes, maybe single or double, is considered to be a string type variable. Okay, uh, so we'll be dealing, we won't be dealing with strings currently, we'll be dealing only with numbers. However, there are certain things you should keep in mind while, you know, writing names of variables. First of all, a variable name may consist of multiple alphabets, please remember that. It may even contain numbers, but the variable name should begin with an alphabet. So it can be A1, A2, but it cannot be 2A. Because a, a variable name should always begin with an alphabet. So it should always begin with an alphabet. It may be followed by numbers. And remember, you cannot have a blank space in it. If you have a blank space, that means it is not considered to be a proper variable name. So never do that. And uh, moreover, you cannot have variables with, you know, uh, special characters like dot at the rate symbol. You cannot have something like this. A at the rate B. No, this is wrong. You can have AB. You cannot have A and space B. 
uh, even this is wrong. You cannot have A dot B. This is wrong. Okay, so but you can have multiple characters. It can be followed by number, and this number can be followed by again al alphabet. Even that is possible. A to B. Even that is possible. This this two are correct. But it cannot be the reverse one. You cannot have one A. No, this is wrong. Two B. No, this is wrong. It cannot be this way. Okay, so I believe you can understand how to name a variable. Similarly, you may have the only special character which is allowed out here is the underscore. You may use underscore, you may use a underscore b, that is possible. But uh, you cannot use any other, uh, you know, special character for variables, remember that. And then, uh, we'll start with the input part. Okay. Uh, before starting with the input, let me tell you one more thing. We can assign the value of one variable into another variable. This is perfectly valid. See, a equal to 5. We can always write b equal to a. Now, what it means is 5 is getting assigned to a and then whatever is the value of a, I am again assigning it to b. This is perfectly valid. And remember, we can have even multiple assignments. We can also have something like this. a comma b equal to 7 comma 8. This is perfectly valid. That is A will be 7 and B will be 8. This is perfectly valid. Please remember that. Uh, you know, uh, those who are coming from, you know, uh, already a Java or a C++ background, you will find this peculiar. But in Python, this is perfectly valid. You need not worry. We can write this. We call this multiple assignment. This is a single assignment. This is multiple assignment. You are assigning more than one value to more than one variable. And remember, the first number goes to the first variable, the second number goes to the second variable. And always remember, always uh, the contains, that is the numbers, will be on the right hand side of the equal to. And left hand side should always be variables. Because variables are like containers, I am repeatedly telling that. Next comes the input. Now, what do I mean by input? Okay, I will begin with a simple example. Uh, suppose we have something like this. A equal to 10 and b equal to 15. Okay, let me I think, tell you one more trick. These are two separate lines. I can also write it in the same line by separating these two lines by a semicolon. Please remember this. You require this in several locations. Sometimes in most occasions you will require this is when you forget a line. When you forget you know, to write a line, you usually put a semicolon and write that line. That's completely valid. So please remember this two will be considered to be two separate lines as in you are doing two different lines. So these two are there. Now what I do is I write C equal to A plus B and I'm going to display uh, the value of C. So when I execute this program, what it is going to show me? It's going to show me 25. See, I run it for the second time. Do you think it's going to show me something different? Obviously not. It's going to show me 25. Let me execute it for the third time. Even for the third time, it's going to show me 25. So however number of times you may run, you will always get you know 25 because it's always forever going to add 10 and 15. If I want to you know, add two different numbers. Again, I need to modify this program and change this 10 or 15 to some other numbers. Now, imagine you have written a program consisting of, you know, 1 million lines. And, you know, uh, say there are, you know, uh, uh, say 10,000 values you need to change every day. Don't you think it's a tedious job? You know, again, go through different lines and change it. So this is where we have the input. In the input, what actually happens is the computer gives us the opportunity to accept different values. So the computer is going to wait for you to give some numbers. And once you give a number, it's going to take that number and do whatever operation it's going to do. For example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept two numbers out here and find their sum and display the sum. So I'm going to make the computer you know, allow the user to give two numbers and only those two numbers it's going to add and it's going to display those two numbers. So how do we do that? So A equal to, this is what we're going to write, INT. INT to tell that it's an integer because currently we are working with integer. We can write input. Now, by the way, let me tell you, we can write float out here, FLOAT, all in lowercase. To indicate it's a floating point number that is a number with decimal point so input enter a number we can write it this way enter means to uh, input means to ask the user uh, to wait for a user input and this is a message it is going to show the user 
this can be written as anything within quotes it is and b is equal to i and t again same thing we can write the next number enter let me print a message another number and now i am going to add these two numbers a plus b and i am going to display the value of c so print sum equal to I am displaying the value of C. So here when you run this program, when you execute this program, what happens? The first thing it does is it prints this message. That is enter a number, it prints this message. Followed by you will find the cursor blinking over here expecting you to give some value. So what you are going to do is you can give a number. Say for example you give 12 out here. And then once you hit the enter key, again it will print the second message. That is now this message all depends upon the user. So you be very careful whenever you are giving this message. So enter another number. So this is what you are going to write. And this time again you will find the cursor you know blinking out here. You will find that the cursor is blinking over here. So give another number say for example 30. Now when you hit the enter key what will happen is it's going to add this 12 which got stored in A and 13 which got stored in B. These two numbers that is 12 and 13 will get added and get stored inside the variable C. Now it will display sum equal to that is 12 plus 13 that is 25. It's going to display that. Now for the second time when you run again it will give you a message enter a number. You can give a different value. Again hit the enter key again enter another number, number followed by you know you giving a different number and those two numbers will get added and it's going to display. So what you did was you created a very simple calculator that can add two numbers. This is what we can do. Now even this time I'm going to give you, you know, uh, a group of assignments, a uh, group of questions rather in an assignment and then please solve it and send it to me as soon as possible. Thank you.